So what I'm going to be doing today is trying to make a half moon lamp using the white cement and this foam because I've got some more foam at Christmas in some packaging. I've got two pieces here so I need to attach those and glue those together. And I'm going to try using photo mount for this. Not sure if it will work, but we'll see. Put it on a bit of paper so I don't get it all over my board. I'm going to let that sit for a few seconds and then pop a weight on it for a few minutes. Well, those have stuck together quite nicely now, so I don't need to do any more to that. And all I need to do is make a crescent to cut out. Now, I've done a little circle there and I'm going to kind of use that as a guide. And don't forget, you do want to make sure that you've got enough space here, here and always at the ends as well for when you fill in your cement. And all I need to do now is cut that out. And if you use a brand new blade, it cuts really, really easily. And I find if you just go up and down with it like this, then it will cut out right the way through this foam. If there's any bits that you're not kind of happy about, and not happy about that bit there, you can just trim it up until you're happy. Well, this is all ready now to be put on the base. I've put some double-sided sticky tape on here to stick it down to this cardboard base. And this cardboard base, if you've seen any of my other videos, I've used it several times. All it is, is a piece of cardboard that I went over with some clear packing tape and it gives it a nice finish and it's easy to get off. So with the double-sided tape on, all I need to do is just push that down and that's not going to go anywhere and then mix up my cement. And the cement that I'm going to be using is this white stone cast powder. I mean, you can use Portland cement, maybe you can use anything you want because you can always paint it afterwards, which is probably what I'm going to do anyway. I'm not going to need too much because it's not really a massive mold and I don't like to waste it. That'll probably be enough cement powder in there. And then I'm going to just add some water. Now I like it to be like a very thick whipped cream kind of consistency. And all I do is I make sure I've got no lumps in it and give it a good stir. Now this cement, you get about a 10 minute working time with it. And, and to be honest, that is plenty. And if you've not mixed up enough, you can always just mix up a little bit more and add that to the top. So I'm happy with that now. I'm just gonna pour that in. I couldn't have done that better if I'd have, if I'd have measured it. Now, I'm going to use this stick here to ensure that I've got it all the way around. Because it, it kind of is a bit self-leveling, but it's not brilliantly self-leveling. And then just top it up. And that'll be set in about 20 minutes. And I'll just knock it, get rid of any bubbles that are likely to come out. Now, I'm going to also put this bit of wire in. Because that, I find, gives it that little bit of extra strength as well. And that's just a piece of aluminium wire that's going in there. That won't sink all the way down, so you're fine with that. This has all gone nice and hard now, so it's just a case of removing it from the back end like that. And I will, again, reuse that in a few weeks' time, I'm sure, when I make another one. And then taking this mould out of here. Now, this is going to be a fairly simple affair, I think. So that's come out there really easily. Now it's about tidying this all up and shaping it all up. So that's what I'll do using my selection of clay tools. And it really does carve easily. I mean, you just need to go round it. Being careful with your fingers. And then you'll find that it will carve lovely. And you can get some really nice shapes into this. What I'll also do is I'll be rounding off these edges. So it's a lot neater looking and they will round off really easily too. If not a little bit messy, but we can live with that. Well, I've shaped all that up now as much as I want to shape it up because obviously it's the moon. So the moon isn't going to be a complete geometric circle or whatever it would be. And now I want to put some detail in it. And what I mean by detail is I want to put some craters in it because the moon has craters. So what I'm going to use it's just one of these little tools, like this, and dig out some craters. Some large, some small, 
some at an angle, going all over the moon. So they should dig out quite nicely like that. And I'm gonna go over and do some more. And then once that's done, I'll show you what my next step is. I've decided I wanna add a star to this moon. So I didn't have one. What I thought I'd do is cut one out using my laser. So all I've done is I've gone into the insert button here on the laser box basic, inserted a star, put it to the size that I want, set it to cut, set my wood to basswood. I'm okay with the power, the speed and everything. I've got a piece of scrap basswood or plywood actually. It's, I use the same cutting for it. I've got my extractor fan on. I've got my laser all set up. All I need to do now is check that it's going to cut onto this piece. So I just do a bit of framing. Yep, and I'm going to put on my safety goggles. Really, really important. And I look so devastating in them as well. So this is what I look like in my goggles. So I'm happy with the framing and everything. All I need to do is push start. Apparently it's only gonna take a minute to do this one. Uh, there is a new attachment coming out for the X-Tool and they have agreed to send it to me to try. So I will be showing that as soon as it comes out. It's it looks absolutely brilliant. Again, it's gonna raise this up to a completely different level. If you do wanna get a hold of the X-Tool, I do have a link in the description. You won't be disappointed with this laser. It's so easy to use, so easy to set up, and it's brilliant, I love it. So there we go, there's my little star, all nicely cut out. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna add some glitter to this and also paint it. Once I've painted the star and the moon, the star is going to sit here like that. And I'm going to paint them both silver. And I'm using the Arteza silver metallic paints on this. It will need a few coats to make it a solid -y color. And I have sealed this with some PVA glue first. And if you wanna know how I do that, then I show that in my other video where I make the fish. I'll link that at the end. The first coat of that is nice and dry. And what I've done is I've mixed up some black metallic paint and the silver that I used on this into some water here. So I can put just a color wash over this. And when I mean a color wash, I literally do just mean going over it like that with the darker color, leaving that on for a few seconds and then using a cloth like that over it to give it a bit of texture. It will darken off these little craters really nicely, but it will also give me that little bit of texture that I want on there as well. And then once that is completely dry, I'll give that a really good coat of varnish. I've also glittered the star. I think that's come out really pretty and I will put a coat of varnish on that as well so the glitter stays where it is. I've finished painting this now and I'm quite pleased with how it's come out. All I need to do now is go over this with some satin varnish. I don't want to put gloss varnish on it because I don't want it to be too glossy. But I like the textures and the shape that has come out. And I've finished my little star. I covered that in some varnish as well so the glitter's permanently on there and now it's about gluing the star to the moon and that's going to go. I was thinking about putting it at the top, but actually I quite like it at the bottom. I've also on my D1 laser cut out a base and it was really easy to design. It took me about two seconds to design it. And when it's finished, it's going to sit on there like that. So the first thing I need to do is glue these bases together, use a wood glue and clamp them together and they'll be dry within a couple of hours. But I do need to glue this to here. And to glue that on, I'm going to be using super glue because I think this is going to be the best thing to use to stick this down. Not only that, but it dries really, really quickly. Making sure not to get it on my fingers because I have glued my fingers together so many times. And then I'm gonna glue that onto there, that little star. Well, this is nearly finished now and all it needs is for me to glue it to the base. But to be honest, I've had another idea and I thought what I would do is fill this bit in with some clear resin before I put it on the base and turn it into an ornament or a lamp. And I think that's going to make it look really, really nice. The glitter's not going to go anywhere because it's all stuck down with the varnish that I used to put it on. Hopefully it'll work out well. I'm not quite sure because this isn't a really great circle, but it doesn't matter. We will see what it looks like. I should have really taken that into account when I first made it because then I could have made this like a perfect circle. And this is the base that I've made. It's all glued together now. All I need to do is paint this black. Now I'm going to paint it an iridescent black because I think it will look nice against this 
white silvery moon and I'm still going to use this base as the base for it once I filled it for, with resin as well. well. This is all finished now. I'm really pleased with how it's come out and it lights up brilliantly. I think it fits on that base really, really well. I did have to move the star up a bit because I wanted to ensure that I got kind of the half moon going around there of the resin. I'll show you what it looks like without the lights on. So this is what it looks like without the lights on and I think that's come out really well and the little tiny micro bubbles that are in there because I didn't put it in a pressure pot or anything have come out really well and they actually sparkle and I love the way the light just zooms through those from this LED light underneath here. This video on how I filled it with resin will be out on Thursday. What I'll do is I will link that in this video on Thursday so look out for that. If you'd like to buy me a coffee just to say thank you and help support this channel the link for that is in the description below along with the link to everything that I've used to make this project. Take care, enjoy your crafting, bye!